welcome. Today I'm gonna talk about infections. What are infections? What they happen? Infections, it means when there's abnormal substance, foreign body could get inside your body and cause harmful feelings. They are going to damage the inside of your body. Harmful uh, substances, we call them pathogens. So what are pathogens? Pathogens are microscopic organisms. So once they got inside your body, they are gonna get you sick. These pathogens, they're so tiny, they are microorganisms, it means they can see only under microscope. I cannot see them by my eyes. So is it only one type of this pathogen? What is the difference between viruses and bacteria? Why I have these signs? Why do I have these symptoms? What's going on? So I am going to explain it to you what is the difference between each microorganism. The first microorganism I'm gonna talk about is the viruses. Viruses are so tiny. Basically, they're dead. They're not living even. They don't metabolize. They don't eat. They don't grow. They're dead outside their body, outside the air. But once they get inside our body, human body or animal or a plant, they're going to show one sign of living things. I'm just going to explain what do I, when I want to differentiate between living and non-living, the living things they have to do life characteristics. So if I see respiration, it means they're breathing, growing, sensitivity, excretion, the removal of the waste product, the nutrition. This is, means this is living things. Actually, there are seven. They are living things. But when they don't show these signs, it means they're dead. So viruses, Outside the body, they are dead. So if they are dead, why they cause disease? Once they get inside your body, they are going to show only one sign of the living thing, which is the reproduction. The virus, they are not real definite cell. The, you know, the basic unit of biology is the cell. And I have two types of cell, plant cells and animal cells. And the structure of cells is just you can see here, there's a picture of cell. I have a cell diagram. This is the cell, it has to be a definite nucleus. Uh, I will get you the cell just to, because this is not really showing. So this is a cell. I have in the middle, I have a nucleus. Around it, I have cytoplasm. And this is called cytoplasmic organelles and all surrounded by a cell membrane. This is typical cell. Viruses, they don't have any of these. What do they do? What do they contain? They contain only this inside the nucleus. There's something called the genetic information, the DNA. The viruses are a protein code with a DNA or RNA information only. Some of them, some of the viruses contain DNA. Some contains RNA. This is the genetic information that they have. But once they get inside our body, they are going to use our cells or the animal or the plant. And we call the cell is a host cell. So this is our cell, the animal cell. So they got inside, they use their DNA with our DNA and they start to make it as a factory of producing a lot of viruses. So they are basically using our cells for their reproduction, but they cannot reproduce by themselves. So um, now what happens to the host cell later? It's going to have an immediate death or later death, but the cells will going to die. So that what happens when viruses get inside our body, they are going to destruct our cells. They don't have their own way of reproduction. They're gonna use us, ours. But the good thing is most of the viruses, they have a life cycle. So basically don't do anything because don't, you don't have to kill the virus. They have a life cycle. For example, uh, an infection that caused by a virus is uh, we have some flu, which is like so common, uh, the influenza or the flu, just it takes five days to one week, then the virus will subside by itself, then you're gonna get, you'll feel better. So what you have to do is just you have to rest, get, uh, keep your body hydrated, get a lot of lemon helps, ginger helps, just to ease the symptoms. Panadol is just relieve the headache, uh, maybe uh, antihistamine if you have a runny nose, because when you have a viral infection, you will have uh, signs. They are just like you have runny nose, headache, um, sneezing, uh, itching. Um, for younger children, 
they might have uh, diarrhea and throwing up, vomiting. So just we try to take medication that can ease the signs, but we don't fight the virus itself because the virus life cycle will be done by itself. Well, whenever someone talk about infections, they say, yeah, bacteria, virus, as it's like the same. Well, yes, somehow they are microscopic. But if I want to compare between them, it's just like the difference between a giraffe and a goldfish. The bacteria is around like there is one nonillion. Nonillion is just, it means like one with 30 zero. That's how much bacteria we have. Basically, it um, shows, um, it makes more of the biomass of the earth. So we have uncountable number of um, bacteria, and there are so many types, but we could see them under microscope, and when we study them, we figure out they're a cell with a well-defined cell membrane, a well-defined nucleus, and a cell wall. So in structure, when I look at them under microscope, they're totally different. As I said, giraffe and a goldfish. Different, it's the bacteria they have just like this, Kind of, but it has a, this is, doesn't have a, a cell wall. It has a cell wall and it has a nucleus and a cytoplasm and cytoplasmic ormolas. Are they living? Definitely they are. They reproduce, they respire, they grow, they nu get nutrition, they excrete. So all the characteristic of living thing is applied on the bacteria. It means the way I treat the bacteria is different than I treat the virus because their structure is different. We figure out there are so many types and shapes. Some of them are roads in shape, some of them are circles, tafillo. There are many types. I'm not going to go in details about uh, uh, bacteria. I am just, my concern is I want you to differentiate between uh, viral and bacterial infection because we are, going, we are facing a real big dramatic disaster, chaos we are having because the people are taking the antibiotics randomly that I'm going to talk about the resistance. That's why I have decided to talk about this topic today. So we understand that the bacteria is different. It means when I have bacterial infection, most of the time you won't feel it because this number of bacteria that we have, not all of them are harmful. Some of them are good, which is we really need in our, they're in your mouth, they're in your um, small, they're in your intestine, they're, they're just in your digestive system, and they help you in digesting the food. And sometimes if you don't have this bacteria in your uh, digestive system, you will have indigestion problem, and then you need to take supplement that helps and aid in digestion. So uh, I need to understand how harmful bacteria can get inside my body. Now I should have been mentioning this before, the viral infection and the bacterial infection, oh, and there are so many other types of infection. There is fungal, there is parasite, there is protozoa. This infection comes between direct contact or airborne particles uh, touching the body fluid like saliva, blood, they can transmit or just you touch something, maybe someone is sick and uh, he spit in this place and this happens in school sometimes and then you place your hand in it and you don't know there was a germs or a bacteria or virus in here, then you touch your eyes, your mouth, then you might get it. Food poisoning, if you don't get uh, clean food, you might get bacteria in your in your digestion and then you will have uh, infection. So most of the time your immunity, which is a really good fighter, they can stop the bacteria. But if the number of uh, bacteria there too large and your immunity cannot stop it, in this case we have to get the antibiotics. Once you've been diagnosed by a bacterial infection, it means you have infection in your ears, like it's called otitis media, you have uh, maybe pneumonia in your lungs, in your digestive system, in meningitis, it's so many types of bacterial and infection. And then I have, the doctor has to tell me it's bacterial or viral. How the doctor can determine if it's a bacterial or viral, your signs, they can check. Plus, we figure out that it's a bacterial infection. But what kind of bacteria specifically, in this case, we have to do a culture which and a sensitivity test. We are going to take a biopsy or we are taking a bit from the infection, if you have infection in your tonsils, we are taking from your tonsils a smear of uh, the saliva and we study 
the type of bacteria that we have with special chemicals, I can determine the type of bacteria that I have. Then we are going to do a sensitivity test. We are placing different kinds of antibiotic to know which antibiotic works the best in stopping these, uh, these microbes and these bacteria from growing. So the fungi is different than the viral infection, different than the bacterial infection. Each type I have to locate, I have to diagnose the type of infection, then we have to prescribe the medication that suits or work the best for this type of infection. Most of the viral infection, we don't prescribe medications because it's just, there's a lifespan, as I just said, life cycle is just gonna done by itself. Just rest, hydrate yourself. We can take some medication that just uh, reduce the signs that the patient experience. But if the viral infection is serious, for example, AIDS, for example, hepatitis, meningitis, that's the viral infection. Meningitis can be viral and bacterial, but if it's a viral, this is serious. And we need to fight these viruses with a strong medication. The medication is called acyclovir. We don't really prescribe it because it causes a lot of side effects. Unless the doctor has, you really have serious viral infection, then you really have to take uh, this medication to cause liver damage, even sometimes to cause some uh, seizures. It has a lot of uh, side effects. Uh, the antifungal, the antifungal medication, it can be ointment, it can be systemic, it can be like you can take pills or you can take uh, creams or ointment. Same for antibiotic. There are, if you have eye infection, um, you are going to use ointment. That is, for example, gentamicin ointment. I have it here. For example, you can use it if you have eye infection, uh, any skin scar, maybe you have a cut, a deep cut in your hand and there's bacteria is growing on it. So you're going to, there's infection and it shows that there's infection. You can use the creams. So is there anything we can do at home to help with the flu or influenza? Well, yes. Uh, studies have been show that green tea does an amazing job. Lemon, perfect, honey, ginger it just helps to feel better and once the season started to change when all the viruses are going to be activated just make sure you got um, every day one cup it tastes so good and it's just um, increase your immunity to the maximum so you're not going to have uh, a lot of um, viral infection or any kind of infections what you should do get a lemon squeeze it and uh, not hot water, it has like to be between 50 to 60 degree uh, because if it's too much, if it's boiled, it will, uh, it will damage the vitamins and the vitamin C inside the lemon. So squeeze a lemon, ginger, honey, and green tea and make this uh, cup on a daily basis. It will help a lot in um, fighting the viruses, increasing your immunity so you're not going to have uh, viral infections. So this is it. I just want you to understand uh, and you don't underestimate the bacterial infection. Don't underestimate or don't be easy when you, when you take antibiotic. When we say antibiotic, whether it's, whether it's systemic like pills or injection, make it like alarm, set an alarm. Like if you took your medication, your pill at 8 in the morning, if, for example, if it's 12 hours, it depends on the dose that the doctor prescribed to you make sure you have it like not five minutes earlier enough that much just be restricted teach yourself to really help your body to fight the bacteria and you're not going to have any more serious infections that's all for today that was a lot uh, i still have more but this subject is very important to educate yourself about the antibiotic resistance Thanks a lot for watching. I wish you never have any infection and you enjoy your days. Thanks for watching. See you soon.